So in this video, we're going to be looking at how sort algorithms work, focusing on the bubble sort. First of all, how does the bubble sort work? Well, it works like this. Now notice how the values as the, uh, we work through that list gradually were rearranged into order. So they, first of all, the highest value moves into the last position, then the next highest value moves in the penultimate position and so on. And also the other kind of thing to notice is how long it took to perform the, um, the sorting process. The process itself is pretty simple. You look at the first pair of items and then swap them into order. Then you look at, look at the next pair, swap them into order, and you just keep on repeating that process until everything is in order and you can scan through the whole list in um, without having to make any swaps. But the key thing there is it makes a lot of comparisons and it ha can take a long time to complete. Now, if you look at a bubble sort, as it says here, it's a very simple algorithm to sort data. Although it's simple to understand, it's probably one of the, it should be the least used sort because it's one of the most inefficient. Secondly, We've got a definition right here, and this definition, as you can see, it says it's um, a bubble sort is where an array of data is traversed continuously and adjacent pairs of elements are swapped if required until all the data in the array is in sorted order. And that is something that you want to learn and learn that down. Certainly write it down in your exercise book. As it says down the bottom there, it usually requires multiple passes through the data. And that multiple passes and multiple comparisons makes it a very inefficient way of sorting. Now I've got another animation right here, another video, which we'd like you to watch. And after you've done that, what you want to do is pause this video and spend a few moments trying to write your own bubble sort algorithm. Now, if we just watch this example here, you can see what would happen if we're searching this little list of data, 72954. And as you can see, it would make four passes through the data. If you look at this, um, the list here right now, you'll notice that it's all my, um, got some high values on the left and some lower values on the right. What happens is this, the highest value, which is this nine here, that gradually moves along when we sort it and ends up in the top position. On the next iteration, the next highest value, which is the seven, that moves along until it's in the next highest position and so on. And we keep on doing this until all the data is in order. Now, in each case down the bottom here, we've noted down the number of comparisons and the number of swaps that had to be made. And you'll notice that on the right hand side here, it tells us that we had to make uh, 10 comparisons and six swaps to sort. Um, five pieces of data. That's a lot of comparisons and a lot of swaps to sort a relatively small set of data. So we're going to now try and write a simple bubble sort algorithm. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have a repeat loop that's going to repeat until um, the list is sorted. And we're going to indicate the list is sorted by um, when we don't have to make any swaps. So we're going to have a flag, a Boolean flag, uh, which we're going to initially um, set to false. And we're going to say when swapped is false, uh, we can end this operation. We know that the list at that point is sorted. So we want to do a uh, compare the value of the flag flag that we're going to have with this uh, false when, when we don't need to do any swaps, the list is sorted. So we're going to say down here and we can, at this point, we can say um, uh, the list is sorted. Now, if you're going to do this, you're going to have a repeat loop. We're using a flag. We clearly want to make sure that we set this flag so that we do run around the loop the first few times. So I'm going to assume that the list is sorted and I'm going to set swapped to false at the top up here. Notice how I've got one equal sign up here, meaning assign. So assign the value false to the variable called swapped. 
And down here, we're using a double equals sign, which is saying compare the value swap to the value false. And um, this loop then will re keep on will keep on going around this loop until such a time as we don't need to make any swaps. So inside the loop, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to iterate through our set of data. Now, I'm going to use a set of data, um, an array called ARR. And because I know how many elements there are in that loop, I'm going to use a for loop. So I'm going to say for um, n, in other words, the position, well, in fact, I'm going to say for pos is zero. So the lowest element in the array to the array dot length. Now you've got to remember that the length, if the array has got five elements in it, the um, top element will be element four, but the length will be five. So what we need to do is we need to always subtract one from that. And if you remember in a for loop, you always have you finish your for loops with the word keyword next, and you should then have the loop control variable afterwards pos, which is the position that we're going to be looking at. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the current position to the one on its right. So we're going to say if the array element at pos is uh, greater than the array element at um, pos plus one, so in other words, the element that's one to its right, then what we need to do is we need to swap them. And at the moment, I'm just gonna write the word swap in here. We could use a function to do that like that. But if we do a swap, we need to indicate to the algorithm that we, we have done a swap. So I'm gonna say swapped is assigned to the value true. So now that will cause, that means that we won't end our loop. So that's the end of that if statement. And there you go, that's the uh, that's the basic algorithm we've got right there. So what's gonna happen is we are repeatedly, we're gonna repeat this process until we don't need to do any swaps. We're gonna scan along the whole of the array. And if elements are out of order, we're gonna swap them around and set the swap flag to be true. What this means is when we get to the end of this pass through the array, we'll see swapped is true. So we go around again and we start again and we go through. Now you did see, you might have seen in that video where uh, what happened is each time we weren't going through the entire length of the array, we were go going every time we reduced one from the number of elements. And it's quite possible for you to do that. You just need to write some slightly more complicated code. And we want to try and keep this nice and simple. What we need to do though to finish this off is look at this uh, thing here, this swapped function. Now, as I say, you could write a function to do this yourself, in which case you would give it two values. We would give it the array element at the current position and the array element at uh, the position plus one. And we're going to swap them around. But because there's only three lines of code required, I'm just going to write the code here in place. Um, and this is the only place I'm going to be using that. So a function means uh, it would probably be more work than it's worth. The first thing to remember is if you've got two, um, if you imagine you've got two cups and they contain different liquids and you don't want to swap the liquids around between the cups, well, you know, you can't just pour the contents of cup two into cup one because it will just fall and it will just spill all over the floor. What we need is a third container and that's no different to swapping variables values. So first of all, I'm going, to, I'm going to use a temporary variable and I'm going to make that equal to the array element at pos at the current position. So I've got that saved away temporarily. What I can now do is make the array element at the current position equal to the one on its right. Now, at this point, you notice both of those um, array elements are identical. So what we need now need to do is take the array element at position plus one and make that equal to temp, which we originally gave the value of array element of um, pos, and that's now swapped the items around. So there you go. That's the um, that's the pseudo code needed to do a very simple bubble sort. And so you can make this. Uh, more advanced by uh, considering the number of elements you need to scan through each time around, then that'd be a good, good idea to kind of have a go at doing that. But there's there's an outline of the um, pseudocode. If you were writing this in an exam, I would recommend that you add some comments. So for example, a comment um, up here could say a Boolean flag indicates that elements were swapped. Um, and we're going to initialize this and we put that up there um, because I'm 
in an editor, it will ultimately wrap around, but I'm just going to put that over there. And then I would recommend that uh, what you would need to do is outline this. But the key key points for you to understand are that we have one loop that repeats until we don't, don't need to swap any items. We have another loop that iterates through the data. We have a selection statement that uh, compares adjacent items. And we have a little piece of code that swaps items around and sets the swap flag true if um, items need swapping. And we use the swap flag as a loop control variable. So we exit the um, bubble sort when we have sorted all the data.